Stuffing crochet toys is a really, really important part of the process because it's what gives the toy its shape. I mean, obviously the crocheting gives it its outline shape, but it's what gives it its final shape. So this toy, if it was over or under stuffed, would not look the same shape that it does when stuffed at this amount. And all I'm gonna to do today is give you a really quick rundown of how I decide how much stuffing to put inside my toys to give them the shape that I'm after. So there are two ways that quite commonly stuffing crochet toys goes wrong, especially for beginners to imigurumi. And one of them is overstuffing. And it's so, so easy to do. You're excited to get your toy full of stuffing. And so you ram it down in there and, and squish it all out and sew it together and sit back and and the stitches have all sort of parted and you can see the stuffing through them. The other way is understuffing, which in some ways is less of a big deal because the stitches stay closed so it doesn't change the overall effect of the toy. Um, but it still then sort of sags as it sits and, and looks a bit sad and, and, and that's not what we want either. So I'm just going to show you very quickly with one that I'm making at the moment, uh, a different cow, how I decide how much stuffing to put into the toy and then hopefully that will help you to fill your toys if you're feeling a little bit underconfident about it. This is the pattern that I'm currently working on. It is a Texas Longhorn cow. And um, so far I've put together the body and the head and the nose and the horns and the ears and one of his arms or front legs if you want to be technical about it. Um, and I've just put together in terms of crocheting the other front leg and I'm gonna show you um, how I decide how much stuffing to put inside. So we'll pop this chap to the side and here is my empty leg. Now this has, I think, about two or three rounds left to go to get it up to the right height. And then I'm just gonna single crochet two together to close it. Um, so nice and hollow at the moment. This is my bag of toy stuffing. Um, I buy toy stuffing because I do so many um, crochet toys in a huge bulk bag and then I separate it into little bags and leave them all over the house and annoy the rest of my family. Um, so I'm gonna get it out of here. I'm gonna dump this onto my lap whilst I show you. So I stuff crochet toys in small amounts. So I get a piece approximately the size of the opening that I'm going to use and I very gently manipulate it in my hand to make a little ball and I just push it straight inside. If the part that I am filling is particularly deep, I just get the end of my crochet hook, this end, and I just very gently, you don't want to wedge it down hard and you don't want it to misshape at the edge. So what I do is I lay a finger across there to make sure it stays that shape. And I just very gently push it until I feel some resistance and then I stop. And we're gonna do that with another section of yarn, just very gently pushing it in. It's a little bit funny, isn't it? There we go. So what we want is we don't want it to start to spread out or splay. We are just keeping this shape that we've been making and just very gradually filling it up. And although it feels like it's maybe a slightly more time consuming way to put in um, all of the stuffing rather than just jamming it all in at once, what I find is it gives a much more even spread. So there we go. So if you stuff your toys like I do, you'll wait until there's one or two rounds left. And those will probably be, if, especially if it's a limb or a body or a head, the closing rounds for the toys. And then stuff right up to this junction, right up to where you've got to. So it's just sort of foaming off the top like a nice coffee. And, um, and then you can close it just before you finish the close. Um, so I don't know about you, but I close it by single crocheting two together and then I um, attach a yarn needle and I sew in and out and pull gently. So between those single crochet two together and using your nut yarn needle, just make sure you're happy with how filled your piece is and then you can put tiny little extra bits very gently in the top. But the key here is not to force or push anything. Not, it shouldn't feel overly full. You should be able to compress it and have a bit of a squidge, but not too much. And you shouldn't see any widening of these stitches. So it should be this nice consistent volume all of the way around. And 
What you can also do, obviously, you don't have to use toy safe stuffing in your toys. I do because um, I often give them to children. Um, but I do pad out some of the toys that I know that are not going to the teeniest children also with yarn scraps. And that's uh, that's not to say sort of the full ends of yarn because I use those for projects. Um, but for the little cut off bits, I don't throw any of them away. Um, I keep them into a big stack. In fact, I think there's even some on my desk. There you go. Um, little bits like this. If there's a space in the toy, just lay them in amongst the toy safe stuffing. So I would use probably twice the volume of stuffing to yarn scraps for most of the toys that I do, but it pads it out and it's a good, a good use of your yarn scraps as well. So we do not want our um uh, our crocheted stitches to expand as we put the stuffing in we are keeping the shape that we've built but we're just making it um turgid it's only for water i'm gonna go with turgid i'm gonna make it turgid um so you can give it a little squeeze it's not going to squeeze so much that your fingers can feel each other through the toy and a little bit flat and the only other thing that i would say is when I fill a head or body section, here's the cow again, um, I like to make sure that they are completely filled and I will always put then a little bit of extra in just before I close to make sure that they have this lovely smooth shape. You'll see on this cow that it's not completely smooth at the bottom. That's because I'm going to attach the legs on um, in a slightly stronger way than I normally do. So I've left this a tiny bit baggier than I perhaps otherwise would. Um, but yes, the sections that are not, um, that are sort of independent parts, uh, the horns are another good example because they're going to attach at the very end. I want them to be completely full. But limbs, so arms and legs, if you're going to create a shoulder or a hip joint, only fill that section maybe half full. So if I'm going to make a shoulder joint for this, that's why I'm going to fill it up to this point and then do three more rounds towards the close afterwards. And that will mean that when I manipulate it a little bit with my fingers like this, it'll spread out the top part of yarn and it'll give it a flatter part that I can then sew around onto the edge of the toy and create that sort of shoulder joint. Anyway, I hope that that's been helpful. If you do have any other questions about filling the toys with stuffing, just let me know in the comments and I will try and answer them for you. And if there's something that comes up that I've not covered at all, I can just make up another video for you about it. I've, um, I've got two limbs to go. So let me know and happy crocheting.